Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Tia Mari, My Next Act, Season 1, Episode 8, The Finale. Listen, thank you to everybody who's been watching, who's been following us, who's been insulting me for some reason, saying I don't support black women. Interesting. It's crazy. I'm about to say, like, really, this person's the mean one. That's been really... <laughs> I've been nice to Tia, but today the gloves come off. You ready, Blair? I'm ready. Let's go. Tia had her magic mic moment and enjoyed herself on stage. Mm -hmm. It's the next date day and the ladies are all nursing their hangovers except for Tia. Of Tia's course. feeling great. She's feeling pumped. She's ready, energetic, and she wants the ladies to take pictures at the Welcome to Las Vegas sign. Listen here, I had no problem with Tia going out to the Magic Mike show. I know there's some people that may have felt she's a mother and things like that. Her children's gonna see this. They're like, you feel that way, Blair? Absolutely not. Me neither. No. I, I'm just like, hey, look, she grown. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? She wanted to be on the show. She did the show. That can't, we can't use her children and her motherhood as a weapon against her why she can't go and enjoy a, a Magic Mike show. Yeah, she's an adult doing adult entertainment, fun things. Yeah, you know. let's keep going. Everyone else needs a little bit more time to recover, mm -hmm. but they rally in order to do what Tia wants to do for her weekend. Yeah. Tia feels that she is recreating memories. She used to go to Vegas with Corey all the time. Mm -hmm. Those memories started to flood her brain once she got to Vegas, but she says that she's at a point where there is no sadness it's just feelings of gratitude for the great moments that they had together the ladies get their photo at the sign and they get back to the IV so they can uh, get back to the hotel so they, they can get their IVs listen here um she keeps trying to sell us with this every time I go to Vegas or like you know I'm in Vegas and the memories of Corey is flooding my mind you get what I'm saying so I just take it in the past two years you've never been to Vegas maybe not you get yeah. what I'm saying but I just find it very interesting that this is <clears throat> excuse me this is the basically the undertone of basically of what she's trying to sell us mm. right the gloves are off now now i'm about to tell you what we see okay. you get what i'm saying she's basically trying to tell us that like oh you know what now i'm happy now now like i come to vegas and i used to always think of Corey, but now y'all are building these new memories for me that i can actually like be happy we go test that near like the end of the episode let's keep going they go to the pool to try to get more things checked off the scavenger hunt checklist. Mm -hmm. Tia winks at the waiter. He does not wink back. Wow. <clears throat> Tia introduced herself to a stranger. She had a baby kisser on the cheek, even though she was supposed to have she was supposed to have kissed a stranger, mm -hmm. but she found a workaround. Okay. Some guy rubs Tia's feet, and then they meet a couple of male exotic dancers. One of them gives an article of clothing, and mm -hmm. another one gives Tia a lap dance. Sierra then drinks a shot off the exotic dancer's body, mm -hmm. and Tia says part of her growth is having more fun. That's true. <clears throat> She asked the ladies if she made a mistake when it came to Charles because he's a good person. He didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. She does feel that she no longer wants to worry about other people and their feelings, though. Mm -hmm. She says that she's the kind of person who can fall in love with anyone and she can fall quick and hard. Can I ask you a question, Blair? What do Charles have to do with this? Nothing. So why did Charles come up? <sighs> Maybe Tia is just really a relationship girl. Maybe mm. that's where she feels her happiest. And this is all speculation. I don't know that lady. <laughs> but maybe that's where she feels her happiest and most stable. Mm -hmm. And even though she got out of her marriage with Corey, mm -hmm. maybe she's looking for that sense of stability when it comes to having that one person she can go to, she could talk to, she could rely on. And she it looks like she's trying to piece together her friends and her cousin Jerome to be that person for her. Okay. So I think that's why she's like, dang, you know, have I missed out on something good, good with Charles? So, um, Charles was a character that was paid to play in the sitcom, as Blair called it. Yeah. Um, the thing that I find very interesting is that they doing all these things. We even had the Chippendales with the guys, exotic dancers coming through. My wife was talking to me and she said, hey, look, basically, I'm paraphrasing. Tia is basically a, you know. B list celebrity. She's she's famous. You uh -huh. get what I'm saying? Why is she doing like these regular things? I was wondering like where's the VIP <clears throat> rooms, the the sections with all the other celebrities? Mm -hmm. I'm like, why is Tia out with all the regular people? Nothing wrong with that, but I'm just like, this looks like a vacation I could have. I want to yeah. see something I don't see. <laughs> but that's the that's the marketing part of it. Okay. And it's not so much of her being with other celebrities, but her doing regular things, being in public population as if this is prison. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> She's trying to come off as, hey, look, I am a divorced person like you, mm. and I'm healing, and just like you, and I'm going through what you're going through. And truth of the matter is, you're not, Tia. Mm. You're not. Truth be told, Tia haven't showed a drop 
You know how they got the little IV drops and things like that? She hasn't shown a drop of her real self in the sense of what she's really going through in her divorce. Instead, she's giving us what she thinks what divorced people go through and selling that to us in the show. Besides actually stripping herself open and say, this is really what I'm going through. I'll give you this much. I think all that crying she's been doing is how she really feels. You think so? I think that she is very conflicted when it comes to this divorce. And I think that, like she says, divorce is, is like very chaotic and all this type of stuff. And I feel like mm -hmm. Tia's mind is in a place of chaos right now. Dang. The way that she's, you know, upset one minute, fine the next minute, saying that, oh, I only have feelings of gratitude. I'm not sad anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just like she's just really all over the place right now. And there are times in people's life to where you move on from a certain situation or mm -hmm. maybe you're in a different phase of life and mm -hmm. it just feels like the training wheels are off. And I think that's what we're seeing with Tia. So I don't fault her so much for being um, a little bit unstable right now. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it is feels very scripted. And because no, it it's very scripted, it's hard to connect to all of these different curated storylines as though it's unscripted as, as the show has tried to market it as. Mm -hmm. so, uh -huh. And, and, and maybe it's just my bias because it's very hard for me. I'm like, listen here, especially since her, her Christmas movie and things of that nature, which I am going to watch, um, is coming out in like a couple of weeks and things like that. And I'm like, you know what? She is an actress. This could be just one big film reel that she just putting on a performance and things like that. Cause it got to a point where I got tired of hearing her laugh. Cause I'm like that. I'm like that can't be your real laugh. Yeah, that cannot be your. Ha -ha! <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, do you I'm think like, it's a nervous laughter? No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. She's on. She's on. She, she's just, on. Action. Yeah. Ha -ha! You know, it, it's yeah. just. Okay. <laughs> she did it like ten times in a row. It was a one. lot this episode. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Continue on. Um, Tia talks to her. Oh, I do want to touch on the thing about Charles. I'm sorry. She talked about how he's a good person. He didn't do anything wrong. And she is the type of person that can fall for somebody really quickly. Yeah. The more I hear Tia talk, the more that I think that she ended things with Charles is because she doesn't, she thinks that she might find herself in the same situation as before. Mm, with and Corey? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. As far as getting into a situation, you know, being together and feeling as though she needs to be this doting wife and, and the support system yeah. to this man and everything like that, which, you know, if you're in a marriage, you should be supporting each other. It's not like the craziest thing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think that Tia is just not trying to be in that space. And maybe she doesn't realize that, it's okay to do that. And it's okay to be a partner yeah. in that way. It's yeah. like, she's, she, it's like she, because she's out of her marriage, it seems like she's also staying away from all types of mm -hmm. romantic relationships, which, you know, well, maybe she needs time, but I'm thinking that maybe she just doesn't want to be back in that role. Well, you know, to your point, I've heard some female friends say to me that I make a terrible wife. I mean, excuse me, I make a terrible girlfriend okay. because they don't know how to basically when you're dating or when you're basically a girlfriend, you're not supposed to give your all. Right. You're basically to give like, you know, you basically put a breadcrumb in it, things like that. But because they said they are a terrible girlfriend and they are terrible at dating, they are so used to just giving the all to each person. Mm -hmm. So maybe to your point, Tia, it's like that to where it's like, I just need to. Stop talking to Charles if we go believe this because it's gonna look crazy that I am married to Charles two years after I just got divorced. Right. Dude, you get what I'm saying? Like like Tia may come off as that person to your point. Yeah. Tia talks to her daughter Kyra on the yeah. phone mm -hmm. and she says it gets to her when her daughter misses her and she misses her babies as well. Exactly. I'm cosplaying mm -hmm. mommy guilt now. Okay. I'm trying to relate to y'all. Hey twin. Okay. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's keep going. Charles texted Tia to let him know to let her know that he was thinking of her in hopes that she's doing well. Oh, randomly? Charles, you just <laughs> Charles, did you just send a random text? So she steps away so that way she can talk to him on the phone. Okay. And she tells him, I know I said that I needed some time. Mm -hmm. But I'm hoping that maybe we could get to continue getting to know each other and hang okay. out. And he says, okay. She ended things because she thought things were moving too fast. But now she realizes that she has control of the situation and can move at whatever pace she wants. She said moving too fast, right? Yeah. So they had sex? No. They kiss? No. Like, I mean, like, I'm talking about on the lip. No. Okay. Has he been in the house? I know he's been to the house. Nope. 
Have they been on a date uh, outside of those two dates that like we've seen? No. So, All they did was hold hands. <clears throat> what is too fast? But that's why I'm thinking mm. that maybe Tia has found herself falling for him when she knows that I literally only went with two dates with this guy. I think I'm doing too much. Just like internally, she's starting to get attached. Yeah. And I'm thinking that that's more so what it is because externally, ain't ain't nothing moving fast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then on top of that, to your point, we said a couple episodes ago that it's not only that she get attached in romantic relationships, she may be the type to be attached to, like, even friendships. I think it was, like, when she got divorced or something like that, uh, Natasha spent the night there for three nights or something like that. Blair, I feel like that's a bit much. You yeah. get what I'm saying? And but, it's like every person, like, you protect my heart, you protect my mind. It's just, like, she needs people yeah. in place. And maybe if things don't work out with charles maybe that'll be another blow that she feels she can't handle who knows now it is tattoo time tattoo tia gets a cancer constellation tattoo Mm -hmm. she says that she's a believer in astrology and she is all the characteristics of what a cancer traditionally is Mm. they ask her why she's getting it and she says that she's just having a feeling that she's finally getting settled a couple of months ago she was just kind of floating along but she feels like there's more clarity with her decisions and what she wants and everyone gets something as well Um, i did make a comment when i was watching this that that Mm. doesn't kind of really explain the constellation Mm. you feel settled i don't know maybe there is something to astrology and feeling centered and I don't, I, I don't see the, the correlation, Look, but mm. apparently Tia <laughs> is just <clears throat> feeling more settled. But I, again, like I said, I think she's feeling settled mm. because her mind is being uh, distracted mm-hmm, mm-hmm. by her friends, the liquor, all, all this type of stuff. Perfect. And it's a illusion of, Oh, I'm much better. I'm great. I'm feeling great. I know what I want to do. I know what I want. Mm-hmm. I know I want, I want to keep dating Charles. But when she gets back to the place of being by herself, she's going to go back to the chaotic kind of scatterbrained, mm-hmm. not sure of myself, not sure of my decisions type of thing. And I, I guess I'll say, it's not a bad thing to be in that position. You don't know everything all the time, That's true. but sometimes you have to make a decision and follow through with it just so you can see the result of your decision. That's fair. And I feel like Tia is not allowing anything to really blossom or prosper for her mm-hmm. to actually see the result of her decisions. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Only thing I have to say in this scene is um, apologies to all my other fellow cancers. If y'all believe in that, I, I personally don't, but let's say we did right um i am nothing like tia Mm. (laughs) you get what i'm saying so tia um if you believe in astrology and you believe that you're a cancer through and through and you believe that like cancers act like this guess what kudos to you i think a lot of your problems is very tailored to you Mm. in your life not because of some the way the stars are settled in the sky and things like that now it's the final night in vegas yeah the ladies do a little bit of gambling Uh uh-huh Something Tia was raised to believe was a sin, but she is doing it. She says it's part of her letting go. Okay. It was interesting. There was a moment at the gambling table to where I think they were playing like 21. And the Jack. Uh, yeah. And the dealer asked her if she wanted to hit or stay. And she kind of went on a little soliloquy about how she's a risk taker in life. But, you know, she's a strategic risk taker and all mm-hmm. these different types of mm-hmm. things. And she finally makes a decision to hit and it and it goes, you know, well. But she does find moments to make a therapist out of strangers. Oh, <laughs> That's another thing. Yeah. That stood out during the series. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. She's mm-hmm. she's trying to teach you divorce women to take risk in life because whoa, it worked out for me in this game of blackjack. Listen here. I was telling my wife that she's cosplaying a divorced woman. I'm like, why is she doing that when she's a divorced woman? Mm. Like, like she's like, okay, so let me get in the role of a divorced woman and let me basically act like, or basically give these life teaching moments, these Ted talks in the middle of these scenes that can motivate divorced women. As we're going to talk about later on at the end of the show, she had a whole PSA. At the if, end. if y'all <laughs> stay that long for the, for the divorcees talking about people can't come up to her and thank her for being transparent about her whole situation. I'm like transparent. Mm-hmm. We still, even to this day, don't even know why she got divorced. Exactly. So it's like, 
she leaves us to fill in the blank. But let's keep going because we get to this dinner next. Yeah. It is the dinner, yeah. and they enjoyed spending time together, creating wonderful memories. Yeah. Tia is starting to believe that there is something great on the other side of divorce. Stop right there. Mm-hmm. I do believe there is something great on the other side of divorce if you're in a terrible marriage, in a marriage that's abusive, right? In a marriage that doesn't serve both parties and things of that nature. I agree 100%. So I do not want to attack the statement. Okay. I just want to attack Tia. Oh, okay. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I want to attack the now in the statement, right? Tia, a lot of people believe, I see it in the comments, you are going to go back to Corey. <laughs> a lot of people believe that you are not, that you regret actually getting a divorce based on your actions. Now, here's the thing about it, right? I'm not divorced. I mean, I'm not divorced. And of course, my wife is not divorced. So I find it very, what's the word? Very interesting that she is basically speaking on things that I personally feel like she did not experience. Mm. And there's something great. I feel like even though I'm not divorced, I'm saying that again, that even though it's still early in her divorce, like she only been divorced for two years now, I feel like, Hey, did you experience the something great yet? Or are you cosplaying someone that been through it years later and actually like, see like, Oh, it was a toxic situation. And like, Ooh, I was fearful and I was and I was I didn't know what was going to happen, but things are good. And that's what I got from that statement right there. It's almost like me who are who is newly uh, married. Talk about how great marriage is like 20 years from now. Well, I haven't been married for 20 years. Mm. So I feel like with her talking about divorce as heavy as she is. I'm like, hey. You're kind of new to this. You're not. You're like in the thick of it, it right exactly. now. Exactly. So, and, and it's not looking that great. No. So, <laughs> it's not looking so that's like why, you're on the other side, really. So that's why I'm like, mm. this what actually made me think she was cosplaying divorced uh, women, because I was like, okay, I can understand that, but did you experience that personally? And yeah. that's what but, I'm. But she did say she's starting to believe that. So maybe that's something that she's maybe, hoping for. Maybe it's starting. Maybe she's starting to believe it. Uh-huh. And I give her a little bail to get her out of jail. But in this moment, I feel like she's just saying a vague statement that she personally don't have a testament to support. She does a lot of that. Yes. So like, so she <laughs> the quotables. So, yes. Yeah, so like, like, so it's it's, it's almost like saying. You know what? The sun will come up tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, thank you. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, she starts to cry, saying that it's not easy going through, through a divorce, taking life head on, um, you know, taking on the unknown. That's true. She has taken that jump, not knowing where she is going. Uh-huh. Her friends are very proud of her for not going back to being unhappy and settling. Mm. She feels that she's in a place of enjoying and appreciating where she is. She's excited about her future. She has her tribe, her children, and herself. Yeah. Yeah. Tia, we see like the little signs oh, yeah. on the side or whatever. Uh-huh. The only thing I wrote down that was important to me was that she put a pause on dating again. She is dragging Charles back and forth, back and forth for we to believe that he's a real person Wait in her minute. dating life. Wait a- <laughs> I'm just like, leave that man alone. Wait a minute. If you don't want him, then don't talk to him. It's not important that Cairo put her uh, acting career on the side to be a child fully. Oh my goodness, no. <laughs> That's not important to you? No. Listen here. Here's what I have to say. Matter of fact, I'll let you go first. What did you think about the scene and overall the show, the purpose of the show? What do you think about Tia Mari, the divorced woman overall? I think that Tia has made a life changing decision. That's true. And with make with getting a divorce. Mm-hmm. And I think that it is a chaotic time for her right now mm-hmm. with the aftermath. Cause like she said, in a lot of episodes, she didn't really realize all of what life would look like mm-hmm. as a divorced person, dropping her kids off at her ex's house and, you know, going back and forth and all of that was something that was heavy for her to experience in the moment. That's fair. So, I can totally get with the fact that she's in a weird time right now. Um, (laughs) But it's just, it's so doggone curated. And also, I just feel like with Tia, you know how you have some people who tell you stories, but they only tell you the portion that makes them look good Mm. or the portion that... um, makes it seem like they're in a better spot than they are. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know Tia well enough to say that she is a person that does that, but mm-hmm. I just find it interesting that she doesn't want to reveal the circumstances of the divorce 
and she would is fine with everybody's minds going however they mm-hmm. want to go. That's what I was going to say. Keep going. And then she has Jack A coming on and allowing Jack A to say that, you know, there is a power struggle with mm-hmm. money mm-hmm. and not correcting that or putting that to bed. So to me, I'm just like, there's just a lot of unknowns and vagueness surrounding the divorce. Yeah. And in real life, when I've met people where there was a lot of unanswered questions in their stories, it's usually because they done did something. You done did something. <laughs> they done did something. Mm-hmm. Now, we don't know for a fact, but in my life experience, when people don't tell what's going on, it's because it's a little bit of sharing of the blame going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, now the scene with her friends and everything, and they're telling her that she's mm-hmm. happy for, you know, not settling, not going back and all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. I think that... <coughs> No, keep going. I think that that is great. Mm -hmm. And I hope that that piece of encouragement fits Tia's situation. Because I don't know what fit does. I don't know if she was settling before. I don't know if she was really unhappy because of the marriage or because she was unhappy and she thought the divorce would make her happy. Come on. So I'm just hoping that the decision that she makes, and she's a grown woman. She's going to make her own decision. Mm -hmm. The decisions that she makes, I hope that she becomes more solid in them and feel more confident in her decision so that way she doesn't have to live a life of regret because who wants that yeah you know so um you hit so you hit so many of my bulletin points it's crazy Mm. right i do think tia is someone that needs to be consistently encouraged that has to you have to affirm her all the time and when i hear jack a talk you know, someone who's been through divorce one, two, three, four times. Who knows, right? And Tia, who the main character is Tia, right? She is the producer of the show. She gets to say what it stays in, what goes out, mm-hmm. right? She is produced enough, or she produced herself so much that she does not let us know why she got divorced. Mm-hmm. She speaks vaguely of it, yeah, right? And some would say... Oh, maybe she's just protecting, you know, people's like, you know, character. Maybe she's protecting Corey. But yet she allowed Jack A to speak in in riddles. Mm-hmm. You get know what I'm saying? To give us a little breadcrumbs. Mm-hmm. Right? Let Natasha speak at this table. Didn't cut that out. Right. Right? Talk about thank you for choosing yourself. And not settling. And not settling <laughs> and being unhappy. And these mm-hmm. and these type of breadcrumbs to kind of like I never said why because she could always say, I never said why we got divorced. Right. Cause she already said Corey did not cheat on her. Mm-hmm. She already put that out when they first got divorced. So she's given she's saying a whole bunch of things without saying nothing at all, but through circumstance and other people so that gives her the right to say i never said that i understand that right i understand you are divorced so let me give a little bell to get her out of jail a little bit more you married Corey. um you dated Corey since you was basically a late teenager and things like that or early adulthood and then that been your husband ever since then so i can empathize with you and be like it is new yeah you probably don't know how to date you probably don't know how to keep something for yourself without giving your all. That's why Charles is in the show, out the show, in the show, out the show. Now we don't know where he at for season two. Yeah. Right? I understand you have now being a single mom is very different than always knowing that I have a helpmate in the house. So right. I'm going to give you bail for that. You get what I'm saying? But one thing I'm not giving you bail for is letting us watch eight episodes and you not showing your real self. Mm. That's something that I'm not giving. You spoke in quotes. About where you are in life, where you are in a divorce, where you are in your progress, all is well. You get what I'm saying? That's all she keeps saying. But she's like making the same way as she was making a PSA uh, or basically a, uh, yeah, a PSA about breast cancer. She made a PSA about people who's been divorced. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You get what I'm saying? But she did not show her life. She, at least her real life. She did not show her real thoughts. She did not show her real emotions. I'm not falling for all those tears, right, in my my opinion, right? And I think her whole point was, as we saw a announcement after the show, was to basically give a, hey, let me talk to the divorced women out there. There is life after marriage, and you can do it just like I did. A lot of women come up to me, and they say, thank you, Tia, for showing your life, and now I have the hope to live tomorrow. That's exactly, it's, that's it's, exactly it's, how it happened. I'm like, what, what the <laughs> hell just happened here? <laughs> and she's 
like and these stories don't get told all the time about what happens during the divorce yes they do and i'm just like yes, yes they do. do you know how many housewives done got divorced we review potomac <laughs> we review <laughs> we review okay. atlanta like divorces we, we see and that's and that's and that's the audacity <laughs> we see the raw doree is going through a situation right now and kyle no, on no, housewives no. of beverly hills i don't watch that so okay I but i'm just saying i, I cannot relate divorces that. is happening but, okay but that's the audacity of someone that's new to it and not true to it okay like as i was saying before of you know how when you like first get married and you just feel the urge to tell people about marriage and give them advice about marriage and things like that because she's new to 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 divorce she believes these messages don't get out here Mm. you get what i'm saying no 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 no. trust me divorce divorce is very popular it makes for popular tv actually you get what i'm saying so that's why i'm like i felt like she was doing this to us the whole eight episodes. <laughs> hey, twin, I'm divorced, you divorced. But truth be told, she played in y'all faces uh, and things like that. And truth be told, I actually enjoyed watching the people comments, people actually defending her basically as if they knew her. Well, whole time, Blair said it is a sitcom. Yeah. She's sick. It's a whole thing. Everybody sit at the table acting like they drunk to you, coming, dancing and things like that. It's all a sitcom. She knows TV. She knows how to be an actress. Now, listen here. Y'all go support her show now, her, her movie. I'm going to watch it. I'm personally going to watch it. We're not going to review it, <laughs> but I'm going to watch it because truth be told, I actually do like Tia. I actually have no problem with her and things like that. I don't that. know, man. After watching this show, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 That, and, that, and now somebody will call me Mushmouth <laughs> in the comments and say, I don't believe or I don't uh, love black women where the black women next to me been really been going at Tia for eight episodes. But no, thank you to everybody who's been watching. Oh, I want to say one more thing. Oh, go, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. And go ahead. just like to like debate because I see some people being like, Tia doesn't have to tell anything she doesn't want to. It's her life. She no, can, she do. She can, it can be private and all this type of stuff. It's none of y'all business no, that's my business then don't have an unscripted real raw television show that you're talking about your divorce but talking around it yeah just 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 allow the show to be about where you are in life and not even touch the divorce if you're not really exactly. going to be raw and real like you said you would be so i'm just like yeah it was marketed one way we got something else but hey do you think there'll be a season two I don't know. I don't know what they're going to talk about season two. I don't know. And truth be told. But um, listen here. I, I also read this in the uh, tabloids and things like that. In late October, hmm. um, I guess TMZ caught up with her and say um, they basically asked her, is there a chance of reconciliation with Corey? And she said, we're just taking it day by day. Sound like a maybe to me. <laughs> I'm about to say. Like, so <laughs> listen here. Subscribe, like, share, comment, all the above. We see y'all. Bye.